All right, what's going on, everyone? I'm trying out a new style of videos for the next couple Bears videos that I'm going to start making again. I feel like I could do these videos a little bit more entertaining as far as the looking value of, at the video rather than just me sitting down in front of a camera ranting. I could put it more into a just an audio file with pictures of what I'm talking about and information on the screen eventually. So this is kind of a trial run. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'd like to know. But anyways, I'm going to start this video off with a little bit of optimism, which is very rare for me as a Bear fan. I, first off, real quick, I write for a blog, BearsHibernation.com. Um, I, I try to write at least once a week. I've been slacking. But check it out, there's a bunch of good writers there, and I've had a few articles which I'm basically going to talk about in this video. First off, I'm going to start out with saying, with a little optimism, a return to greatness might not be so far away. Because, in the past, like, ten years, six teams have won the Super Bowl, where the prior year before, they had, like, a 9-7 and seven record or less. So I'm going to go down this list right now. You know, it's, granted, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think we have a shot. But there is, for the for the eternal optimists out there, there is a chance to really have a good season this year, if you want to believe in, in this stuff. And here's some information I've got for teams that have had a 9-7 nine nine record or less the season before they won the Super Bowl. The 2008 New Orleans Saints had a 7-9 and nine record, and they really didn't play that good. Grant, they didn't have a de good defense at all, but they finished 9-7. and seven. And then in 2009, obviously, they won the Super Bowl um, and had a great season at that. Uh, the 2007 Steelers, they didn't have a good year. They, they, they struggled, and they were 8-8. Eight and, eight. and now here, they're the Super Bowl champs in 08. Um, the New York Giants in 2006 had an 8-8 eight eight record. 2007, I think they had like a 9-7 record, but still they got to the playoffs. Or maybe they were 10-6, I don't remember. But they won the Super Bowl the next year. So there are some optimists. And just like the 2001 Bucks, they were 9-7 in 2001. And then they won the Super Bowl in 2002. So another one. Granted, they had a, some of the greatest luck you could have with Tom Brady coming in and being the guy that he was. But the 2000 Patriots were 5-11. and 11. So to go from 5-11 and 11 to a Super Bowl winning team and dynasty, realistically, that's pretty impressive. And the 1999 Baltimore Ravens had an 8-8 eight eight record, and they ended up making it to the Super Bowl the next year with one of the greatest defenses to ever play in the game of football. All right, when we first hired Martz, I was a little nervous. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to lie. I, I thought, okay, outside of Kurt Warner, what quarterbacks haven't had an interception problem? You know, Alex Smith threw a lot. He just didn't play good at all in that system. John Kitna, who had good seasons stats-wise stats -wise under March with touchdowns and yards, had career highs, but he also had just as many interceptions. So I, I think the system's going to be – will be really exciting because we're going to be taking shots. We're going to be aggressive. We're not going to be running. Uh, we're not going to be getting off the bus or running. We run the ball 38 times a game. It's a good game. Lovey's going to be crapping in his pants when he sees. Martz is going to come out probably the first game throwing 40, 45 times. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. But it's also going to. It could be. It's going to be exciting, but it's going to be scary. Now, you know, Kitna, when he was with the Lions and Martz. He threw for over 4,000 yards the first year, 21 TDs, 22 picks. But for a guy like Kitna, who's really not the top talent in the league, to throw 21 TDs over 4,000 yards, I mean, that's like throwing Kyle Orton there. And that's basically what Kyle Orton did last year, but that's besides the point. You know, it's impressive for numbers and yards, but he also got sacked 63 times. That is the scary part, if you want to think about it, because our offensive line is not that good. I don't care what anyone wants to say. The line is not a good line. And Jay does a good job at avoiding sacks. I'll give him that. But, I mean, every quarterback's been sacked a lot in Mart's system, even with better lines. You know, the second year, John Kitten threw 4,000-plus yards and 18 TDs and 20 interceptions. 
so it wasn't as good. Granted, I'm not comparing John Kitna to Jay Cutler by any means whatsoever. They're on two totally different levels talent-wise, but I'm just pointing it out. He was also sacked 51 times, and this offensive line just... This offensive line scares me, because unless we're going to change Mart's system and Cutler's going to be rolling out more like he needs to be, because he's not a, po a guy who's going to sit in a pocket like a, you know, and just like Peyton Manning and just pick the defense apart. He's a guy who's better on the run, better with moving around. You know, the scary part is, is we don't have the line for seven-step drops. You know, Chris Williams played really good the end of last year, and I was very impressed with how he handled Jared Allen and, and the guys he faced when he got in. So left tackle, I'm not worried about. The left guard position, you know, I like Beekman, but I don't. I feel he's too small for the people he goes against. Because the Packers have big defensive tackles. Uh, the, 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 the Vikings, they have big tackles. I mean, there's no question about that. The Williams wall is really a wall. And even the uh, Lions have bigger defensive tackles now. So that left guard position is kind of scary. Even Kevin Schaefer there. Kevin, If he was so good, he'd be starting somewhere. Not a backup for Frank Omeo and Josh Beekman. Uh, you know, center, Olin Krutz. He's only as good as the guys around him, though. I think he's done. Garza, Roberto Garbage is bad. And Frank Omiel, I think, will solidify the right tackle spot because that's what he is. He's a tackle. He's not a guard.